Hello, welcome back to Korea Wellness Center. Uh, Facebook. Register dietitian, nutritionist, and I work at the We're going to be talking, um, like Mupa said, about good nutrition for health. So we can go ahead and get started um, with some of the main questions that people ask um, about good nutrition. And so the first thing that I think it's important to ask ourselves is, why is good nutrition important? And then people also often ask, is there, um, like one food that I should eat, or they want to know some food that is going to change their life. And unfortunately, it's not just like eating one food that is going to make you healthy, but it's really the overall quality of your diet and the foods that you're eating at your meals, like the foods that you're eating 80% of the time, 80 to 90% of the time, that is going to make up like your wellness and how the foods are going to affect your health. So for example, like greens are good, um, but if you're eating a small portion of them, maybe a few times a week and the rest of the time just drinking pop and eating fried foods, um, it's still not going to have quite the beneficial effect that you want. So the next slide, we're going to take a look at some foods that um, eating a variety of these foods are going to be the best way to take care of your health. And we'll talk about the different reasons um, and the different parts of your body that can benefit from having a diet rich in these foods. <laughs> Um, so this slide is showing a wide variety of different fruits, vegetables, beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, like all plant foods. And so this is what it means to have um, a whole foods, um, plant-based diet, making the the biggest parts of the meals made up. We are looking at the foods that together, eating a variety of these kinds of foods throughout your week, making these the, um, the biggest portions on your plate uh, are going to help the body and help your health. But me quite kind of the the over that can um, so fruits, vegetables, beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, all the things you see here, they're all a very good source of fiber, which helps your digestive system um, and prevents constipation. So those are some benefits. Um, they also provide vitamins and minerals to help your immune system and they 
feed the good bacteria in your intestines. May we body ni atora awen we will allow for that drop down our immune system a war. We are our thing, I can not love our argue with that bacteria, all up her permitted pan, not let a weeded pan, and we all with our mother, all the pan. Um, eating a plant based diet, like all the foods that you see here as well, um, they have um, properties called antioxidants, and so these are just beneficial things in these foods that are protective of the cells so they can protect against cancer um they protect your heart they protect different organs in your body Noodles are still important parts of culture and tradition, and you can definitely still have those. Um, try to make even the size of like your fist. Imagine that as a portion size for rice or noodles for a meal, and then fill the rest of your plate mostly with these kinds of foods. Okay. <laughs> And a group of foods are going to be the protein foods. So protein foods are important because they help repair tissues in the body, um, especially your muscles. And they also are great because they keep you full. Um, especially eating protein in the morning for that first meal of the day has also been shown to prevent overeating later in the day or um, being really hungry for snacks at night. So for example, if usually your breakfast is some tea with bread, you can add protein to that by maybe adding one or two eggs, um, add a bowl of lentil soup, um, have a little bit of fish with small amount of maybe rice and vegetables, and that would be a more filling breakfast. Mm-hmm. All right. But I know there are also other tasty foods um, that we like to eat at parties, special occasions. Also, they're just very convenient. Um, and so these are some of the sweets that, well, you know, every now and then they're okay to have. Um, we just don't want to make these the foods that we eat every day. Um, so while these foods taste really good, uh, they're actually low in fiber, vitamins, minerals that the body needs, you know, for our immune system, um, to keep our digestive systems running well. Um, these aren't going to help us out a lot. Um, but, you know, say that you want to enjoy like a pastry or a snack, um, some noodles, something like that, um, or maybe a sweet. The best way to eat it is going to be after you have a balanced meal. So that will be like containing a lot of the foods that we saw on that first picture slide.
Um, so for example, say that you're watching your blood sugar. If you eat a meal like this that has maybe a little bit of rice, um, some veggies, soup, some protein, it looks like there's some chicken in there, and then you have that small sweet after the meal, it's going to be better for your blood sugars and for your energy level in general um, than if you just eat sweets on an empty stomach with nothing else. Um, so now there are some foods with other special health benefits. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about is bone broth. Um, and so traditionally, this way of cooking is when you have like leftover bones from maybe chicken or beef, um, you boil the bones for a long amount of hours or for many hours um, with different scraps of vegetables. And then the inner um, like minerals inside that bone, all of that good nutrition comes out into the soup and you drink it as broth. Um, um, so bone broth is very nutritious. You can drink it straight. You can have it in soup. Um, you can cook rice in it. Um, and it has lots of vitamins and minerals and is even a good source of protein. Um, so especially if you don't like to eat too much meat, this can be a good way to still get your protein in just by drinking the broth. Um, so uh, bone broth can also help heal the lining of your intestines if you have problems um, digesting foods. This is something that can help heal like the inner lining of your intestines. Um, and some studies have also shown that drinking it can improve energy. And if you have trouble sleeping, it can also help with that. Um, all right. Um, the next one is fermented food. So um, these foods are going to add good bacteria to our gut, to our intestines. Um, so, for example, when we eat foods, uh, like we saw in that second slide with all of the fried food, sugary foods, those foods can lead to an overgrowth of like bad or harmful bacteria in our gut. Um, whereas these foods actually are full of good beneficial bacteria, um, the fermented foods, and they can prevent an overgrowth of the more harmful bacteria. Um, 
Um, so fermented tea leaves or kimchi, like the fermented cabbage, those are just a few examples of um, what a fermented food would be. Um, and again, they can help with digestion and they also help build up your immune system because a lot of your immune system is actually located in the gut. Okay. Um, and for people that, again, are trying to control their blood sugar, if you have diabetes or pre-diabetes, all of these foods are going to be foods that are low in carbs, meaning they're not going to raise your blood sugar very much. So those would include mainly the protein foods and veggies, but also certain fruits that are lower in sugar, such as um, any of the berries listed or that you can see on the bottom of this page. Um, but also fish, eggs, greens, um, bitter melon, the bamboo, nut. Um, these are all things that you can pretty much eat as much as you want to, especially the veggies. Um, and it will really help control your blood sugar. Um, I know that sometimes people also talk about gas and trouble digesting, especially if you're eating too much vegetables. So what I would say is, you know, increase it slowly so that your stomach has time to get used to it and make sure when you eat, um, don't eat too fast as that can allow like extra air and can cause gas. So make sure you're taking small bites, you chew well, and then you increase the amount of like lentils, vegetables, fruits, um, increase the quantities of those foods slowly. No, but not the will me all without the talami and it's about the Hapachawa to the other side of the Tiba, not the middle of your again, by all about you, I don't tell Jeremy all I add Bohoa Mono. So what about oils? Um, we're going to talk a little bit about why these oils like vegetable oil, canola oil, corn oil um, are not recommended for cooking. Um, so these oils are um, um, another thing to watch out for is like the plastic in the bottles, um, especially if the plastic ever gets heated or is close to heat, the chemicals from the plastic can get into the oil, which are also harmful, harmful for health. All right, so instead, um, better types of oils to use to cook with. Um, again, I wouldn't recommend like deep frying with lots of oil, but um, if you're using coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil, um, regular butter, not margarine, but if you do butter or ghee, um, these are all different kinds of oils that are less processed. Um, and so they are a little bit better to cook with, a little bit better for your health. 
No, but me a ni but me le ko ta to de no se to le to ba ta to de no no olive oil ni a si sa i to de ta si pa ni a ku da a ku do we da de se mo no le but me na si so lu da ba jo o da le so bu jo ki to da ba mo de la da mu de la. Okay. And then people also ask about drinks. And so I think that this is just a good picture to kind of demonstrate how much sugar is really in even a can of pop. Yeah, so even like what the nutrition facts would show here um, would be the amount of sugar in one can of pop would be equal to nine teaspoons or nine like small spoons of sugar. Um, and so the same thing kind of goes, there's a lot of sugar that's hiding in really any of these drinks. So like the sweetened condensed milk, um, even natural juice, a hundred percent juice still has a lot of sugar because sugar is sugar, no matter if it's from like a, a natural source or whether it's added sugar. No, but maybe she called a minute pine, but she was a pine, that's her back or more, that she doesn't know the pine, no. Um, I also listed the diet drinks like diet Pepsi's or even the diet um, sugar packets here. And that's because these um, fake sugars can actually increase your taste for more sweet foods. We also talked about the good bacteria in our guts that fermented foods provide for the body, um, but these fake sugars, the artificial sweeteners, actually destroy those good bacteria. So we, yeah. Those are not recommended for that reason. Um, and sometimes people wonder, you know, apple juice, orange juice, that's 100%. Um, does that mean that you can't eat? regular apples and oranges too. And I would say no. So the apples and oranges, like the whole piece of fruit is going to have fiber and it's going to be less processed. Whereas when you, by the time you get to the juice, all the fiber is removed from that. So it's going to have a lot more sugar, even though it's natural. So um, I would think of it this way of like eating your fruit instead of drinking it. Um, and another thing, like even with the sweetened condensed milk, people that like to add that to the tea or coffee, you could just add like regular cream that doesn't have sugar in it or like whole milk do some of that, and then you still get the creaminess, but it's not going to have all of that sugar. Um, and then Okay. And so then these are better drink options. Water is definitely the best thing to drink to stay hydrated, um, but also different kinds of teas or broths are also good. So you can add lemon or even other fresh fruit to flavor water. You can have lemon, ginger tea, green tea without sugar, black tea without sugar, coffee without sugar. 
Um, so those are drinks that would be recommended. Uh, all right, so a few practical changes. So um, if we're looking at this meal, this could be like a breakfast where there's some beans, some bread, some tea. Uh, it looks like there might be some condensed milk in there. So if we're thinking about this, like what kinds of things could we change? Uh, so for example, we could replace that super sweet tea with maybe unsweetened tea, green tea. Um, we could also maybe add an egg in there for some extra protein and then cut the amount of bread in half. Those would be just a few different changes. You could make all of those changes or even swapping out one would be a way where you can still enjoy your food, but it's making it a little bit more nutritious. <laughs> Okay, so what about this, um, this plate it looks like there's some rice, some chicken, and um, I don't know, it looks like it could be some, a little bit of veggies or curry in there. Um, so one thing that you could do here, maybe take out like a portion of the rice, like cut the rice in half and you could add in some more um, vegetables, a piece of fruit, you could add in a little bigger piece of protein, so maybe some beans or lentil soup. Um, and it really doesn't matter as far as the vegetables go, um, whether they're raw or whether they're cooked. Um, you don't want to cook them in a ton of oil, but if they're cooked in just a little bit of oil, um, it's actually a good idea to kind of balance out your vegetables and eat some raw, eat some cooked. Um, and that way, uh, yeah, you can get the full amount of nutritional benefits from those vegetables. Okay. Um, and then we have a bowl of soup. So even thinking about this, uh, okay, which foods provide energy? So we would see that the energy food from this would come from the noodles. Um, and then for the protein, we see that that's the eggs. Um, and so, for example, if we wanted to add a little bit more protein to make it more filling, we could add more beans to this. We could add like an extra hard boiled egg. Um, and then if, you know, this wasn't filling enough, still wanted more, maybe we could add a piece of fruit instead or like add more of the greens in there, have some fresh chopped veggies, some raw veggies to eat like on the side um, to just add more volume to the food to take up space in your stomach. 
so hopefully what the food part of this kind of demonstrated is that you can still eat your traditional foods that you love. Um, you don't need to follow any one certain kind of diet. It's really just looking about small ways that you can change the foods that you already love to eat more um, in like a more nutritious way. Okay, and then just ending with a little bit about exercise and the benefits of that. Um, and again, really any kind of exercise that you enjoy doing is what I'd recommend that you do. So it often helps in addition to making those changes in eating habits, um, getting more activity in your day with wherever you can kind of squeeze it in your day. So that could mean going for a walk after a meal. It could be going to the park with your kids. It could be um, doing different stretches, exercises, even at home, um, dancing, putting on some music, riding a bike. Um, I know some people have like machines in their house that they use. So really anything where you're moving your body, moving your muscles um, and doing it for um, you know, maybe start with just 10 minutes a day and work up to 30 minutes or something like that. But any kind of activity is better than uh, not moving at all. Um, and kind of just like how healthy eating impacts really everything about your body. It helps your brain. It helps your mental health. It prevents you from getting sick. It allows you to have more energy. It helps you sleep better. Um, these are all things that exercise can do as well. Um, and I kind of like to think about them both, the nutrition and the exercise. They're like um, natural medicine for your body. So they're not going to have any bad side effects. Like it's really only going to help your health to implement some of those nutrition changes and then also to include any amount of activity in your day. All right. Well, that's all I had to share with you today. Um, so I hope that this was helpful. And thanks, Mupa, for um, asking me to put this together. <laughs>